this case is the showcase for uh, E2 Visa, our client from Canada. Uh, he is a, a business owner in Canada and uh, he was he had a mixed feelings uh, uh, about um, whether he had to go for a startup or for to purchase a business. So uh, he was not sure if he would be able to uh, open up uh, a business from zero because uh, it uh, takes uh, some experience and of course uh, some time to build the, uh, the client base. Uh, and that's why he later on at, uh, at his uh, petition preparation, he decided to purchase a business. And uh, that took him a little bit. Uh, I gotta be honest, uh, it took him about um, two, four months to find the best fit for him. And uh, he decided to finally get the a restaurant for which he paid um, a good amount of money. I, I cannot say it's crazy. Um, I wouldn't say it without uh, Mike present. While I'm waiting for Mike, and I hope he shows up. Uh, let's talk about uh, E2 visa and uh, what it takes to uh, to get approval for this type of visa. First of all, uh, you gotta be from uh, a certain country that signed a treaty with the US. Not all the countries in the world did that, but uh, a big bunch of them did. So the list of those countries is available online. Uh, if you don't know uh, uh, whether you fit uh, uh, within this criteria or not, then you have to uh, go online and uh, type basically E2 treaty countries. And uh, pretty much the first link is going to tell you whether your country uh, falls within the uh, this um, uh, number of countries. Once we know that, the second thing is uh, to know exactly what uh, kind of business you will be doing in the States. You have two options. Uh, option number one is uh, to uh, open your own startup, start the enterprise that you're going to be developing and scaling. Uh, that should take not less than $100,000. And that's the third uh, criterion, right? So you have to have a capital of at least $100,000 of uh, clean money, meaning that we can prove uh, the uh, source of funds for that investment. If you bought the, uh, for example, the uh, a house or an apartment five years ago, uh, and now you sold it uh, for uh, $500, but you purchased it for uh, $200,000, $200, we need to show the initial $200,000 that you spent. Sold another asset to purchase this asset, we have to go back in time and see what was the source of funds to purchase the initial asset and, and so on. So we need to get to the uh, actual source of funds, which could be uh, uh, your salary, that could be your dividends, that could be the sale of your business, uh, that could be royalties, uh, that could be uh, inheritance, uh, it could be a credit uh, or uh, a loan or a mortgage in a bank. But if, you, if it was a, a credit or a mortgage or a loan, you have to uh, prove the uh, source of funds for your collateral. Uh, collateral is something that you pledge to the bank in case you default on your loan. This concept is important to understand because I see a lot of uh, misunderstanding as to the uh, source of funds when we deal with the sale of some property of some real estate, apartments, houses, uh, commercial uh, real estate and things like that. Uh, by itself, it's not enough. We need to go back in the past and see uh, what money did you use to purchase this um, uh, asset. The amount of money. Uh, I keep saying $100,000. However, I do have cases in my career where uh, I was able to uh, get approval for this type of visa with less amount of money. To be honest, I'm not a big fan of that because I think it's risky to show anything less than 100K, but it's possible. Uh, it's possible and it's proved by the cases that I, um, I got approval in the past. Uh, the lowest amount of money that I was able to get E2 visa for was $60,000 is uh, the bare minimum. I don't think we can go any, anything less than that. I actually surprised we got approval for those cases. Uh, I had two cases of those. I think it's a, it's a high risk. However, what's important to understand that significance of investment, and that's the, one of the criterion uh, of, uh, in this uh, type of visa, it basically says that the significance should be calculated based on the type and the nature of your business. So what it means, that means that if you have a business where you sell goods, let's say you have uh, you sell something on Amazon, or you have your, your own website, you sell uh, kitchen appliances, for example, you say you're selling the, uh, the toys for the kids and things like that. So when you have uh, a case like that, 
I do believe that $60,000 probably is not enough, you know, just because we deal with something you can touch. Uh, and you can show that you spent uh, quite, quite a few bucks on those goods. Uh, however, when we deal with, um, with um, uh, service type of business, an example could be uh, from, uh, from my experience, for example, the tax services, right? Like someone who files uh, tax declarations for the, uh, for the public. IT services, like some cloud services, uh, how much money you need to have to, uh, uh, to start a, a business that, uh, that, uh, where you sell services? It's really hard to spend anything even close to 100k, right? I mean, there could be different kind of businesses. Um, oh, by the way, I see that Michael is uh, probably here. If it's the same Michael, so let me guys see. Hey, hi Stanislav, how are you? You all right? Is everything good? Everything's good. No, no, I was expecting we might talk a bit earlier, so I had to jump back to work. Now I'm back in my car, so uh, I, I do have a few minutes. Yeah, we can spare, we can talk. Let's spend that, that few minutes uh, with a lot of uh, value. So um, I already told uh, the, the everybody who's watching us online right now about what E2 Visa is. We all understand what that is. Tell us, please, Mike, uh, how did you make up your mind to get the E2 Visa? What, what was your decision? Well, there's a lot of personal stuff been going on. I've been planning, I guess, to, to, to make my American dream long time ago. And I think uh, the, this uh, COVID uh, make it uh, sort of more, it pushed me really hard, but hey, do it now. Okay, this is good timing. Okay, so there's quite a few other personal family decisions I had to make and I had to make it fast. And then my opportunity was to go with the E2 investment visa. And I'm glad I found you. I'm glad you gave us a, a good overview. What is it all about? What are our chances? And thanks a lot. I mean, it, it took a little longer than I expected. But again, this is all based on how we did our research on the business and how we did uh, our due diligence and essentially we're here this is most important okay so um guys so michael is from canada he uh, purchased the business here in the us so uh, michael tell us uh, please what was your decision between uh, starting your own business a startup or purchasing an ex existing business how what was your thought process in that uh, i thought always that purchase an existing business that actually well run it's less risky than actually doing a startup mm -hmm. and because uh, i'm coming from a different field and i didn't want to stick uh, with my uh, it expertise anymore or too much longer I decided to, to look for established business, which would give me opportunity uh, for the visa essentially, right? So that was, again, my, my personal, um, it's all based on the family and how old am I and many other things. Okay, good. So uh, tell us a little bit more about the actual business, about the restaurant that you purchased. What kind of uh, cuisine is that? Uh, where it's located? Uh, the price, if, you, if, you, if you're if you willing to uh, expose this information. Yeah, no, that's uh, basically, yeah, it's, it's, it's a cafe. I, I purchased it in the North Palm Beach. So it's a very good uh, established area. The cafe has been running for nearly 20 years. It's a lot of clientele. Um, as we speak right now, I'm actually in the parking lot and there's quite a few cars and people coming in. Oh and yeah, know, show, us, guy, show, show the, the entrance to the uh, business. Oh, there you go. So there's a Green Garden Cafe, right? There's people. We have a lot of police officers coming to us. We actually give them a really good discount because we like our nice. police here. <laughs> nice. Yeah, and then there's a good uh, courtyard here. Yeah, so I really like the location that there's offices uh, behind me there in the but there's uh -huh. uh, quite a few residential areas. And again, it's been established really well overall. So that was another uh, decision for me to make. Uh, I didn't want just, you know, cafe and just a plaza or a cafe, you know, in the middle of nowhere, even if it's in a good standing, right? So I decided to go with this one and I'm glad I did. So, so far, you know, so good. Yeah, the season is kicking in right now and, and I'm happy there's more and more people coming in. Right. Coming from the north, yeah, different states, etc. Right, to spend uh, Florida. Did you have any other options for the cafes or restaurants, or, or this was like something that you really liked and you just uh, picked it? Oh no, there, there was quite a few, and uh, I, we have actually a few discussion with you, Stanislav. There's quite a few different options, different uh, restaurants, even different field businesses, and uh, and again, not everything was uh, you know as smooth or location wasn't good enough. 
or you know we didn't have enough uh, personnel who works in the business which will qualify me for the e2 visa again this is all about due diligence and how much we check into it and finances etc right so mm-hmm. that one was spending up more than any others for me what was the price range to purchase that you were looking at and what was on the market Oh yeah, so I was looking uh, anything between a hundred to two hundred thousand. I was willing to go um, to two fifty if it's a really good. In fact, there was a a cafe that actually I gave an offer for nearly two hundred seventy thousand because I like it. it was a French cafe, very well established in in uh, Fort Lauderdale, and it just didn't work out because at that point uh, I believe uh, owner. Uh, become a bit more greedy so the price was there and I would give them what they asked and essentially they said no 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 we're doing good we, we want more money so okay. this is where I said okay well thanks but thanks uh, um, and then I went away so and that was uh, one of my next uh, next uh, businesses and cafe that I put my eyes on and then I decided to go with it very good michael uh, tell us please uh, how was the process of working with uh, my team what was good what was bad what you liked what, what you didn't like uh, share your experience please no overall again uh, well after we talk and, and i realize uh, how you operate uh, your business stanislav and, and uh, the, the folks you got working uh, for you how you involve in the social media how we communicated through different channels including uh, telegram and uh, whatsapp And then every time I need something or we need to discuss uh, anything with your team, yeah, it was a spot on. Like, uh, uh, it's it's nearly perfect. Uh, you know, I, I would get a response. I know you would get involved. I didn't realize how, how you monitor it pretty much every other chat. And I know you have a lot of clients. So, again, I appreciate every time I, I got help from you and from your team. So, that, that was excellent. I can't complain. Sorry, I didn't file a single complaint there. I know I had opportunities <laughs> if I want to, but um, thankfully everything was good. All right. Yes, we have a quality control uh, department that controls That's right. Well, right. Of the uh, of the chats of the uh, work with the clients. I know that you uh, that you gotta go. Uh, so uh, just in short, uh, in uh, 30 seconds, what would be your uh, best advice to someone who is uh, uh, in the position that you were? like six, seven, eight months ago when you were thinking about it, when you wanted to do this, uh, what would be your advice to the businessman that's right now somewhere in Europe, in Russia, in South America, in Canada? Uh, tell, sh- share this, please. Well, uh, advice is it's, it's do your research, first of all. So do your research. What do you want and how do you want it? How fast do you want it? Uh, always consult uh, you know attorneys uh, what your best choices are what you can do or can do and the timing and if you're looking for brokers obviously there's more research to be done to, to have a, a broker who will help you to find a business etc so I would say uh, the patience and due diligence it's your your best friend uh, when you start uh, planning to Uh, on moving uh, to United States and actually opening a business here. I cannot do anything else than that, uh, uh, Michael. Thank you very much uh, for uh, showing up for the Zoom and uh, thank you for your advice and uh, uh, good words uh, towards uh, my business. I do wish you luck with your business and uh, I want to see you prosper. Yeah, thank you very much. And I hope our cross paths will, will uh, come again and, and uh, we, we can actually do more business and hopefully green card at some point yeah i still want to get there definitely we're keeping an eye on it uh thank you very much yeah. okay all yeah, right okay good thank you Stanislav. okay Have a good day. Bye. It was great. Uh, so uh, fast and straight to the point. Uh, if you guys uh, uh, who is present right now and you have a unique opportunity to ask questions about Mike's case, about how we worked on it, maybe additional details. I think Mike gave us a pretty good picture of what was happening uh, with uh, with the price range, with uh, with how fast he, uh, he was uh, doing this, uh, his advice towards uh, working with professionals, with brokers, uh, with uh, a good planning with the due diligence to to, to be made uh, and actually a really good story about uh, uh, having a few offers on the market for the uh, cafes for the restaurants and you see how it works sometimes you even give more money for uh, to purchase a business and it doesn't work out so you you don't need to be uh, discouraged just
just because that happened because you see uh in the uh, example of mike uh it's uh he just kept, kept going and i remember he was uh, uh he didn't say that but of course he was really upset uh, about uh, uh a few uh, deals uh, that didn't go through so you have to keep moving you have to have uh, a confidence in yourself and your future uh, enterprise and just have this mindset and i think this is the best uh, way to approach uh, any type of visa and especially if it's a business or uh, investment visa so georgia is asking how long does it take uh, to get this visa great question georgia it depends it, it depends a lot on how fast you will be working uh, because uh, the uh, contract with my corporation in, with my team is for six months so it cannot go above six months the way we go with the case uh, but to be perfectly honest with you it's possible to uh, gather all the paperwork for e2 visa starting with two months so two to three months it's the average that we compile all the documents that we need for E2 visa. There is a bunch of factors involved. Like for example, in Mike's case, uh, he had maybe three or four offers that didn't go through. So we had all paperwork ready long time ago. All we needed to have is add the business to the uh, the uh, proof of source of funds, to the uh, his uh, uh, business experience, to everything else that he had in the past. So uh, if everything is set up, uh, if you have your other startup uh, going uh, that you spend about 60 to 70 percent of your investment uh, of your initial investment in that startup it's a go or if it's a purchase of the business and it went through fast then we, we're ready to file so anywhere from two to six months it, it's it's a go okay uh raul uh, is asking a question where can we find business opportunities to invest in uh raul also great question as you heard uh what mike said uh the best way to uh look for investment opportunities for e2 purpose uh is to find a local broker right and it's important to understand that in the usa the brokers that deal with businesses who buy who help to buy and sell they license to a particular state for example raul uh, i'm in florida right so we have all the connections here in florida to find you uh, a couple of good uh, business uh, uh, brokers who will be helping you to find uh, the best fit for your budget for your uh, requirements uh, however if you go to let's say california or new york you will have to find uh, the brokers license in that particular state sometimes brokers are licensed in a couple of states uh, those are uh, uh, rare to find but it's possible however i assure you that uh, to find uh, a pretty good broker uh, in any state is not that hard uh, it's just you use google uh, you find it by uh, business brokers uh, there is um, a very good uh, website i can recommend to look up uh, some business opportunities you can preliminary go to uh, biz b i z b y b u i by uh, s e l l sell.com and uh, this is like the resource for those who want to buy uh, or sell business and you can also already see uh you can filter by state by by city by type of business and see what's going on in the market but that's going to give you a really good picture of what's going on uh, with the prices also and uh through that website you can also find a good business broker because usually each business has already a, a business broker behind it it's a really good place to start also don't forget that you may uh, start with the franchising right you can uh, uh find any franchise uh a company in the states and uh purchase they they, they franchise in uh, in a good location and they will help you out with a lot of stuff so this is a, a really good option to go raul uh, also i'm looking for uh eb2 national interest waiver but i'm uh if i combine with and invest is it easier if i get your question right so you want to go for eb2 national interest waiver visa and uh, this is a little bit different uh, by criteria from E2 visa. EB2 national interest waiver uh, means that you, you have to have uh, either education or uh, you have to be a person with uh, exceptional abilities if you don't have the proper education. And then you have to have an endeavor, a project, what are you going to do here in, in the US? And that project, that endeavor has to be in the national interest of the United States of America. The question is, is it possible to claim a certain business to be in the national interest of the states? Uh, maybe, unlikely, but maybe. What kind of business could be in national interest uh, uh, of the states? For example, if you establish or purchase a big logistic company, let's say a trucking company with 10, 10 trucks, 
right? So then we can claim that uh, with your business, you will be in the national interest uh, of the U.S. because you help to uh, to do logistics in the States, right? So that's possible. Uh, also, another way to see if your EB2 uh, NIW case is good for, uh, for filing uh, to see if you're going to employ at least 15 employees. So if you establish a business in the States and you have a 15 employees plus, I can make a pretty good argument that uh, this particular business is in a national interest, although it could be regional and local, just just because you fight the, the unemployment. Uh, I got your uh, question right. So uh, the bottom line, you can combine the investment in EB2 national interest waiver. However, that has to be in a national interest. So that's that's a short answer. Another question. Uh, if I want to immigrate from Germany, which visa should I apply for EB2 or E2? Uh, great question. Uh, there is anonymous attendee. There is no name. A person from a German uh, is choosing between uh, E2 and EB5. Uh, which way to go? This could be a simple question or it could be a very complicated question. So when could it be a, a simple question? If you want to immigrate and get a green card as fast as you, as, as you can, the best way is to go with EB5. Uh, there, is no, there is no better and faster option right now to, to be able to get a green card uh, through the investment. So uh, if you a long term thinker and you're thinking, OK, I want to come, I want to bring my family, I want my kids to go to the school, I want my wife work uh, or my, my husband work uh, and I have uh, at least eight hundred thousand dollars, of course, you have to go on EB5 and this is the best option. If you're thinking about um, just making money and doing commerce in the States and you don't care about uh, 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 the green card, you're perfectly cool with the Germany. You want to come back to Germany. You don't want your kids to, to be Americans. So this is easy. Then you choose E2. Uh, it's uh, easier to get. Uh, it's uh, it's probably faster to, to get in the States. And I should tell you this. All our clients who were from Europe, uh, from Spain, from Germany, uh, from France, uh, from uh, Ukraine, all, all of them got the E2 uh, really, really fast and, and in an uh, expedited manner. Uh, because uh, I guess there is like uh, some kind of loyalty to uh, uh, EU citizens. Uh, right so uh, the cons uh, the uh, consulate officers they are really loyal to those uh, petitions and they uh, approve them like this especially if they prepared professional i think i answered the uh, eb2 versus e2 question so it's uh, it's immigration or commerce there is much more in that there is much more um, uh, we should look at the amount of money you want to invest we should look at uh, will will your business be able to create 10 jobs because for eb5 we have to create 10 jobs with e2 there is no such requirement of course of course it's good to have a couple of uh, people who work for your business to show the economical impact right that your business is not marginal in a, in a legal way to say but yeah uh, these are the um, that's the um, uh, aspects you need to think over can you please explain what are the steps in obtaining the E2 visa. Uh, how should I get prepared for this? It's a very good question. I already, already uh, kind of discussed it in the very beginning of the uh, Zoom. So uh, the steps are as follows. Step number one, you have to open a company uh, in the United States of America. You should skip this, uh, uh, this step only if uh, you're planning to purchase the company, which I don't advise, right? Uh, and let's, uh, let's uh, take a step back. Uh, when you purchase an existing business in the States, you have two options to go by. Number one, you just purchase the whole thing like uh, uh, ABC Incorporated, right? You just purchase the, the shares of this company, basically, and you now own it. And number two, you purchase the assets of the company, right? You don't purchase the legal, uh, the this uh, legal form, the entity. You just purchase what's inside of that company, uh, the client base, uh, the uh, equipment, the goods, the services, uh, the vendors, uh, the uh, lease for this company, everything that belongs to that particular uh, business. And uh, if you, so if you buy the company, you don't have to register the company. However, if you open up your startup, or you purchase the assets of the American business, you have to have your own company that's going to go through this uh, transfer. Uh, so number two, open up a, uh, a business account on that company. Uh, step number three, once you open the, uh, the uh, business account, you transfer the money to that business account. And again, remember, if you 
who want to purchase the business, those steps are not are not necessary. You can, you, you're going to purchase the whole thing in itself. So I'm talking about startup and purchasing the assets. Uh, once you transfer the money to the uh, uh, business account, then uh, you either invest that money, you purchase the goods, you establish, you, you get the lease agreement, you uh, maybe you hire uh, one employee or two to start, you buy the equipment, you buy the furniture, you buy the computers, whatever it takes. It depends on the type of, the, of your business. So you invest about 60 to 70% of the uh, total investment that you want to put in. So for example, if you're putting 100K, I want you to spend at least 60 to $80,000 and the rest we keep on the business account for the operational expenses to start your business. Very important guys, and this is inside insider information. No attorney will tell you this ever. What the consulate officer is looking at, and I don't know why, it, for me, it's, uh, uh, I don't understand that, but they want you to have a website for your business. While you're doing all this, the, all these steps, you have to start working on your website. I don't know why they're looking at it. To me, it makes no sense. For example, if you have a logistic company, um, you don't need a website. It's a completely separate type of business that, uh, that doesn't need the website or presence online at all. Uh, but for, 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 for whatever reason, the American officers, they think a little bit differently. So make sure you have a website. Also, uh, social media presence is also a good um, uh, thing to have. And again, uh, uh, maybe from a business perspective for, for some, a certain type of business it doesn't make sense but for uh, chances to get this approved approved this is a good idea to to do uh, okay let's go further a uh, business plan you have to have a i don't know if it's st step five or step six you have to have the business plan you can either hire the professionals in the states who will be doing the business plan you will pay maybe 1500 to two thousand dollars or you can do it yourself. I can give you the templates or uh, business plans from uh, the clients that we uh, we, we had in the, in the past with the you know with the wiped out names and confidential information. So you can do it yourself. I do recommend to work with uh, professionals because first of all it saves you time and it just looks much better when you do it yourself. But again, about 10 to 15 percent of my clients they do the business plans themselves. Meanwhile, while you're doing on this, uh, we need to make sure that the uh, proof of funds for the investment has all the documents. And just like I said in the beginning, we have to get to the original source that uh, originated the chain of uh, maybe purchase of, of the assets, establishing the business, inheritance, whatever it is. We need to have the original source. All the transactions from that source to the bank, or if it's a cash transaction, no problem, we can document that. Uh, and very important that you pay taxes on your income. That shows that you made money in the past. Very important, show me your tax declarations that match the amounts that you made uh, according to the uh, proof of funds. So this is the critical, very important. Actually, I don't allow my clients to transfer the money to the business until and unless I qualify the source of funds. Why? Because if that's done, you cannot undo it, right? You just cannot send the money back and say, oh, I'm sorry, mistake. No, that's already recorded on the statement. We cannot wipe it off. So critical, get approval from attorney. If it's if I'm your attorney from me, from my team, through me, that it's good, we're good to go. And only then transfer the money because it could be a really big problem. Once we have all that, I do the memorandum. If you go through the embassy, as we send it to the uh, embassy. If you go through the change of status, you're already in the States, we can change your status. Uh, and uh, there you go. Uh, that's that's your uh, peti petition for E2 that has a very high chance of uh, approval. Thank you very much for all your good questions. This The recording of this uh, Zoom will be on my uh, YouTube. So if you don't, if you guys do not, uh, did not subscribe yet to my YouTube, Please do, please do. You can find it by my last name, by my company name, Shamayev Business Law, um, the best YouTube channel for immigration uh, uh, purposes among all the immigration attorneys. Uh, and you know it, right? So uh, thank you very much for uh, being here. Uh, this was Stanislav Shamayev, the lawyer of your future. Your future begins here. Good luck.